Welcome back everybody to Blue Collar Bassin. Uh, today I wanted to go over my Sun Dolphin American 12 foot John boat build. Okay, this is gonna be a budget build so that anybody out there can do this. You know, I was on a budget. I didn't have the money to go out there and spend, you know, 1500 bucks on a 15 foot aluminum John boat. Do I wish I could have? Yes, uh, but I didn't have that luxury. So um, COVID kind of, hindered this as well because I couldn't find aluminum John boats anywhere. It didn't matter if it's a 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot, whatever. The only thing I could find was a plastic John boat. But that's not a problem because I think it is going to be an awesome build and uh, I think you guys are going to like it. So come along with me and I'm going to show you guys what I did to make this boat awesome and I put casting decks on it, which is something I haven't seen on YouTube before with this particular boat. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button if you like this, and also hit that like button if you like what we're doing here. Thank you. Okay, this plastic John boat, like I said before, it's a 2021 Sun Dolphin American 12 foot John boat. And guys, what you get here is actually what I think is a pretty good deal. Uh, I was looking at the Illuminacraft uh, John Boats at Academy, uh, the 14 footer that I wanted, it was almost 900 bucks, which isn't bad for a John Boat, but I got this thing for like 550 bucks. And guys, it's plastic, super durable, it doesn't fade with the sun, and I, I feel like it's going to be a better option for what I need it for this summer, which is just river fishing in general. Alright, so you can see... I actually put some casting decks on this thing. I haven't seen another one on YouTube that has casting decks built in. So I wanted to upload this video to show you that it can be done. And guys, this thing is really stable. I'll have to show you some footage um, out on the water, but I just wanted to show the build before it got all dirty and stuff like that. Like I said, I do a lot of river fishing. So that's, that's the main reason I didn't put carpet on it. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, starting up at the front here, I just built a simple anchoring system. I have a 15 pound weight or anchor, and I have this uh, anchor cleat here, and that just keeps it guided through. And then uh, just some old anchor line here. Essentially, to hold this up, I'll put the screwdriver through, and then when I put it down, I'll stick the screwdriver through the line to hold it in, and uh, it'll hold me in place. So guys, if you don't want to go out and buy those jam cleats or any kind of other system that's going to hold your anchor line in place, guys, just get, just get, get ingenuitive with it. You know, it's not that hard. Yeah, it might deteriorate the line over time, but I have 200 more feet of it, so I can replace this in a cinch. Uh, up, up here, we also have the Minn Kota 55-pound thrust trolling motor. This is just the Endura C2. So it is the basic trolling motor. It's not the Max that has the half settings in the miles per hour. It has a... Uh, So you can see I do have this wired up already. So it's got the one through five forward settings and then one, two, and three in the reverse settings. <clears throat> Guys, if you have any questions about this, I'll post some of this stuff in the description box as to what I did. Um, also for this build, I'm going to include a, a spreadsheet with all of the weights and stuff for each one of these items. Down here, I built a rudder onto the trolling motor. Because one thing about a trolling motor on a John boat, they tend to, the boat tends to drift around a lot because it's not that heavy. Like if you were in a bass boat, it tracks pretty well. Uh, but for a John boat, and typically these are used on a transom mount trolling motor, which is, this is, but I've made it into a bow mounted. Uh, but it just helps uh, guide the boat a little bit better. 
But essentially, all this is, folks, is just a thin piece of plexiglass. I guess it's plexiglass. I don't know. I have a bunch of these sheets that came in on a uh, just a big furniture item I'd ordered. It was just sitting in the bottom of it, and it's just really tough plastic. I just took my jigsaw and cut it to shape. Uh, I got these clamps from Menards. There's some kind of a conduit clamp, but it has a rubber around the inside of the clamp here to kind of keep it in place on the trolling motor shaft. And then down here, I just have a simple zip tie that kind of keeps that in place from uh, rotating back and forth too much. But it doesn't move too much, so it's not a big deal. Uh, one, one issue with the plastic John boats is that it doesn't really have a very stable uh, bow mount area for the trolling motor. So what I did to kind of reinforce it a little bit, I cut some more pieces of those plexiglass and I put it on the inside and outside. Also what this is gonna do is when I'm going to tighten down the motor, those uh, pegs are not gonna grind into the plastic and uh, deteriorate the plastic. It's just gonna grind into the plexiglass. So uh, trying to reinforce that a little bit and uh, kind of make this thing have some longevity to it. All right, talking about the casting deck, which is probably the most important feature on this boat and which is why, you know, I love this boat. Uh, it gives me the ability to flip, pitch, things like that, that I wasn't able to do on my kayak in the previous years. You see my kayak over there. Uh, that's just a simple, cheap, lifetime kayak from Walmart. And guys, I might do a, a build video on that as well. Uh, it has a pretty nice fishing seat on it. And it's just not a normal everyday lifetime kayak. All right, so right here, as you can tell, we have the casting deck, front, middle, and rear. This casting deck, guys, is super stable. As you can tell, that's in the very middle between the front seat and the second seat, and it's not moving at all. Okay, I reinforced this super well. Okay, um, so if you take a look in here, you can see there's a lot of different bends, a lot of different curvatures that we have to work with. So it's not just the run of the mill aluminum John boat where you pretty much just cut square edges and it flares out just a little bit going towards the back. Not the case with this one. All right, so this front seat here is actually about two inches taller than that middle seat. So we had to worry about compensating for that. We got these cutouts here that you have to incorporate. And also just to strengthen everything up in the front, we had to add a few little uh, pieces of wood to kind of raise it up just a little bit to keep it level with everything else. So you can see like the cup holder area here on both sides, we had to uh, place wood there as well to kind of keep it up. And in the middle to keep it stable, I had to also put in some bracing. So here it is folks, it is not pretty by no means, but it serves a purpose. And that's the big part here. I don't give a crap what the underside of this boat looks like, because I don't see it anyway, okay? So what I did here is I have a half inch piece of plywood. I wanted to keep it pretty light, that's why I didn't go with the three quarter. Uh, so I took the plywood, it was treated plywood. Make sure you get treated. That way it's not going to degrade over time with the, the water hitting it and stuff, uh, which will happen. 
Uh, I, with this build, I tried to minimize the possibility of water damaging it. So as you can tell, I have this brown exterior paint. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of exterior paint, just something that is going to repel water. I know some people use that Johnson's water seal, things like that. That's fine too. Um, but if you're going to be gluing carpet, that could be a little bit of an issue if that water sealer um, prevents you from getting that adhesive to stick to the carpet. All right, so you can tell all the different curvatures within the boat we had to compensate for. So these had to be cut out for those little rod holders that are built into the sides. Those kind of fill up the front. And guys, the paint's kind of sloppy here, but essentially what I did, that rubber matting, is I took some adhesive and just glued that rubber matting to each area that's gonna be contacting the plastic. That way it, it's not the wood rubbing on the plastic and possibly rubbing a uh, weak spot into the plastic. In the middle, these are the, the supports that I built. And guys, these don't have to get too fancy. Uh, yeah, I just had a bunch of scrap wood laying around. I just built some supports. And you just have to go through and measure your distance. So what I did, I built everything else first and then kind of went through and measured out what it actually needed to be. And then here's for the rear. So we had those rear cup holders and that small area. So that goes down in that. And then just this long piece here, this sits right on that secondary seat there. So makes it really nice and stable. And then lastly, I took some adhesive. You can use pretty much anything, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect, unless you want it to be perfect, then that's your choice. But I took this big roll of rubber matting I got from Amazon. I think I got it in like an eight foot roll. It, it was enough to cover everything. Uh, so eight foot roll of that. I just laid, it, laid the casting deck down on the, the mat itself and then cut it out but I left enough room that way I could roll the edges around. That's gonna, you know, repel a lot of water that's not gonna get retained in those wood. And then uh, I stapled it down. Guys, like I said before, I wasn't getting too fancy with this. I didn't get stainless steel staples. I just got regular, the cheap stuff. Okay, once again, this thing is gonna be on the underside. I don't give a crap if it rusts. Okay. All right, so that's the front casting deck. And folks, the front casting deck, I weighed it, it weighs 37 pounds, which is a little on the heavier side. If you wanted to, you could probably lighten this up a little bit, especially if you didn't put the rubber matting on it. And like I said in the intro, the reason I did that is because I'm gonna be river fishing. That's all I do. So the boat ramp that I have is super muddy. And I didn't want to be tracking all that onto the, the carpeted floor. It just makes a mess with carpet. Uh, so this right here, I can literally get it back and just power wash it right off. And it just, it's going to come right off. And it's not going to fade and things like that over time. Uh, as you can tell, I did the extended battery cable. That way I can put this up here on the bow mount and have the battery located in the rear compartment. I did that for weight distribution. Uh, like I said, this casting deck weighs 37 pounds. The trolling motor, I forgot to mention, it weighs 40 pounds. And then I have the addition of the rudder, which is probably half a pound. So you can take all that into consideration. Uh, also the 15 pound anchor, that's all weight that's gonna be sitting up here in addition to myself. Okay, so I wanted to balance out a little bit, so I threw the battery in the back. And hopefully that keeps the, the rear of the boat down a little enough to where it's not gonna be drifting around all that much. All right, the middle here, we have another casting deck. Let me dig this out.
Guys, I just went in here, kind of drew out a template on the cardboard, and then took some of that plexiglass and just cut it to shape with the template. And then laid that template down back on the matting, and I put the rubber matting on top of it. And then once again, with the adhesive of your choice, you can uh, secure that matting down. And, and like I said again, guys, this boat has so many different curvatures. And these rib floors are just a pain in the butt to stand on. So I really wanted something that's going to be a little bit more stable and flat. So I came up with this idea. Yeah, and if you guys got some just random stuff laying around, like I had the, the plastic, I didn't even pay for it. It came in a shipping box that I, that came with something I bought. Uh, so I don't know why they put that in there. Maybe it was to reinforce the box or something. I don't know. Uh, but if you have scrap materials like that laying around, use it. This whole boat right here, I think I might have... With the trolling motor, battery, everything, maybe 950 bucks. I, I don't think it's more than a thousand. So I can add all that up, guys, and post that in the description box. But I think you'll be surprised at how cheap you can actually build one of these things and build it nice. I think this is a super nice build. I mean, it's not just you know halfway done. It's it's fully casted out you know it's got decks everywhere all right so back here we have the rear casting deck uh, so I incorporated a small hatch into it that way I can check the battery life meter that I have attached to the battery and this was probably the second hardest ca uh, casting deck to build uh, just because of all the curvature Uh, but once again, I put the rubber matting on top of it. Underneath, I had to build some supports. And the supports down here are a little bit weird with the, the hatch. I had to support that because you can still sand on this, even though it's in the back. Uh, so this piece of wood here just rests on one of the cutouts. And so do these. Uh, the reason this one in the rear is a little higher is because it'll touch the battery terminals if it's if those aren't there. Uh, so the deck is slightly tilted in forward, uh, but that's okay. And then down here we have our 24 group size battery, uh, marine deep cycle, and I have the extended battery cables connected here. All right, and this was easy to do, folks. I just went down the length of it and took some black electrical tape and uh, just kind of laced those together. And I didn't get too fancy with the, the battery meter. Yeah, I had plans of maybe attaching this to something, but I wanted the ability to look through the hatch and see my battery life when I'm out on the road. All right, so it's pretty cool. It's a little digital meter. I think I got this for like eight bucks. Okay, it tells you how many volts you're currently pulling. All right, pretty simple. All right, we have our uh, paddle. Just in case that guy up there doesn't work anymore. Or this guy doesn't work anymore, probably. Right, we just have a little emergency paddle. Okay, guys, I got that in the back here. So I do have plans to put another anchor mount on the back here. That way I can anchor down the, the rear of it and uh, as well as the front as well. Uh, but this could be in the future. Uh, so some of the accessories and stuff, as you can tell, I like to customize just about everything. Uh, so I put a set of plier holders. I made this once again out of that plastic stuff. I just took a jigsaw and just cut 
cut and took some um, angle pieces of angle and pretty much just screwed that into the plastic here and guys with this I screwed it right into the this thick plastic that makes up the rod holder so it doesn't it doesn't go into the the hole of the boat at all so I'm not you know poking holes where I don't need to all right so got these pliers okay, and I just have them bungeed to the rear of this mount fit in there perfect all right I got the uh, fish scale I got it also bungeed in Got some other accessories here, phone case holder, don't want the phone to get wet. Then I have the scale. Uh, some things I forgot to mention, the middle casting deck, it actually weighs 17 pounds. So you could get that a lot lighter. I would almost say you could even take that really hard foam that a lot of people foam out their boats with and um, then you could probably just glue that right to it. Could work. Maybe if you put a really thin piece of paneling board underneath, you could probably lighten it up that way. Cause that plastic I have, it, it weighs a lot, honestly, for what it is. And then the rear casting deck, it also weighs 17 pounds. So uh, once again, I'll put those weights in the description box. But yeah, I thought I would show you guys that. I think it's pretty awesome. And like I said, I don't see any other videos on YouTube that reference how to build casting decks for this boat. And I know these are some of the only John boats out right now because of COVID, everybody's buying up the aluminum ones. That or the manufacturing plants aren't open, I'm not real sure. I know everybody's been affected by it. Um, but if you want to get out on the water and not just have a regular run of the mill John boat and actually get some uh, useful fishing where you can stand up pitch, flip, things like that. We're gonna be in close proximity to uh, whatever you're fishing by. Definitely check out this boat. You're not gonna be disappointed. Uh, Academy Sports, this is where I got this one. It was around 550 bucks and you can't go wrong. Guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button as uh, I'm trying to build this channel. I don't really have any subscribers yet. Uh, so really every single thing that you guys do will help me out tremendously. Uh, so I wanna thank you guys again. And hopefully in the future, like I said, I'm gonna do the build on the kayak that's sitting over here in the video. And uh, you know, I look forward to posting more DIY videos like this as well as you know day in the life i'm going to show you uh how i apply this boat to my fishing i'll show you uh how i fish different videos for me actually going out on fishing trips i'll show you what kind of tackle i use what kind of rods reels uh, probably do a lot of product reviews things like that so once again hit that like button hit the subscribe button and you guys have a great day and stay fit to fish